Hey there guys, it's Nolan and Jason here with Roofing Webmasters. Howdy. So today is Google's helpful content update hates your BS roofing content. <laughs> Good enough, all right. So, so I, I, under, I know what happened, we've been following it, but uh, Google had an, an algorithm change that was supposed to be right. huge. And if you don't mind, you can probably articulate it better yeah. than I can. They, they, they announced uh, an algorithm update a few weeks ago. And they said it's coming and they gave people more warning and were more specific about the date it was rolling out than they usually are. And the, uh, the word was that it was specifically designed to target um, unhelpful content, kind of <clears> hence <throat> the name. Con as they put it, content written especially for the purpose of SEO. Right. Now... That's somewhat BS for them to say that because like 90% of the content on the web is written for <laughs> SEO purposes or, or is written with SEO in mind at right, least. Right. But what they were, they were targeting really spammy kind of listicle, pointless garbage. So I, I want to, I believe that once somebody, and I'm going to just say roofer, once a roofer believes they need content, they automatically begin to distribute and like uh, put out bad content. Yeah, free, yeah, most so, of the time. Yeah. Uh, well, all the time, yeah. all the time. And I'll, I'm going to give some examples, like all, almost every single time. There's not a thought process of something like this that doesn't lead down a spammy road. For I, I give an analogy: is you really can't, you cannot buy a lead by nature that's a natural lead for an inbound lead for domain authority. Right. The mere purchase of the lead in the first place made it against Do the web. Do you mean link? Or, I'm sorry, link. Okay, sorry. I'm sorry, link. <laughs> the mere purchase of the link in the first place made it against the webmaster guidelines. Yeah. It's yeah. contrived in any nature. It didn't happen naturally. So when somebody sets out to put up content and they don't understand it, we do make stuff with SEO in mind, but we make it for a good user experience. Right. But almost everybody out there, and I'm going to say like 99% of all p people that make websites uh, will do this. So they'll call up and they'll start to say, I need content. And I was like, well, for what? I want two well, blogs a week. To show up for, yeah. right, to show up on, for, to show up on Google. Well, why do you think you need that? Now, I'm not contesting that you need content for your services. Like if you're install TPO material, you need a page about TPO done well. Yeah. But all pages about TPO are not created equal. They're not, and, and a lot of times people will just start to, and then they'll say, well, I need more content. So people will, let's first say that the idea of content is like almost as old as the algorithm. Yeah. It was links in the beginning, by the way. That's why I brought that one up. It was links. If you had a weighted link with a keyword relevant link and you showed up for that. Right. And then that got exploited and they moved to content, which was a panda algorithm, by the way. So this is a... Which is at this point a decade ago. Over a, a, over a decade over a decade ago was yeah. was it 2011? No, you're right. It, 20, you're right. You're right. Yeah. It was it was ten years ago. Yeah. So ten years later, Google's like, okay, we had Panda and we moved. We still consider links, but we moved towards content as an algorithmic tool to have people show up for what they consider SEO. The problem is is that when a business owner considers SEO, they're usually dealing with ten year old data in their head. Right. And so. Yeah. They think they need content, and you do need content, but when someone goes to push content that doesn't know what they're doing, then they automatically spam the search engines. Yeah, That's why they hate the content that people are distributing. That, that's why we have potential clients call up with an older website with 400 blog posts on it, yep. none of which do any traffic, or if they do, they do irrelevant traffic. Right, and that's the kind that's the kind of stuff I believe the algorithm was mostly going for is the 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 new update, the helpful content update. I agree. Was they were looking at stuff that's just being churned out and nobody looks at and nobody cares about. So I talked to a guy, smart guy, nice guy. I'm not dogging this guy. It's just that he called. And he wanted his site worked on. He never had a good site, and he now has a site with 76 pages on it, and there's very little. Almost all of this is blog-ish, spam-ish type content, but he's in a town, in a state that's low population. And I say that because somebody can have semi-bad content, if Google doesn't have a better choice, 
they'll still show you a little bit. You still won't do as well yeah. as you could have. But if anybody tries at all, they'll beat you. So he's getting a little bit of business off of it. But um, things like, oh God, if I can say some of these without reading, the best restaurants in. So that was just a, this is on a roofer's website. Oh geez. Yeah. Um, best tourism places in. Top attractions in. History of this city. Um, the, and this was all stuff on this guy's site. This guy listened to me, and I, my hat's off to him for listening to me, because some people Oops. don't. Yeah, he, he did. And, and I was like, look, this is not appropriate. And this is like, well, people like the site. I said, but those people are either placating you or want to make money. Yeah, if or, you're asking your friends, that, what do you think of our new website? They're, they're not going to say, well, bum... I think it sucks. I mean, <laughs> the rest of the people say, don't want yeah. to redo this website. So you have all these yeah. really poor quality uh, digital marketing agencies out there that want to slap on something, and charge this guy a monthly fee. Right. They don't want to get off in the weeds that they want to slap on a review tool or do some PPC or whatever. I'm not going to read all this because I don't want someone to go, but five roofing tips every such and such should know. And, and then uh, what are the biggest advantages? And why uh, this type of roof is the best choice for your property. And like, so I, so I wanted to read some of these. Because that last one could yeah. be a good not article. Not in a string of crud. But not yeah. in, yeah, not with uh, all the other garbage Five reasons you need. It. Nine things to know about. Ten reasons you should. <laughs> um, I'm reading the first parts of all these. So this is exactly why Google made the algorithm. Yeah. Will he get hit? I don't know. He's in one of the lesser populated states in America. He may not get hit because they might not have better a choices. better option. But right. if he has a competitor come along who does better, then yes, he will get hit. So this is just so people understand like two thirds of this. This is 50 of these pages at least mm. of this crud. And so, and when someone said, well, I put up city pages, well, I did blogging, but in what manner and is it a good user experience? So you need pages for services, you need pages for materials, and then they need some changes to them. And you might have up to like 20 city pages, depending on, you might have a few more, I, I'll do a few more in commercial, but, but yeah. they will flat out penalize you for throwing up a website that has a bunch of trash pages because you thought it was going to help you show up in ranking. That's right. the essence of why the update was yeah. done. I mean, and in the guy's defense, you mentioned uh, a minute ago that people are often dealing with 10-year-old information. Yeah. And, uh, to, hell, five years ago, that would have worked. Right. We, we, I, I like to tell this story because it's, again, a lot of times when we're talking about the mistakes you make, we know their mistakes because we've made them or we've done them back when they worked and we now know their mistakes. Right. We had a client once that we had done. Um, he was actually uh, selling water purification systems. You know who I'm talking about. And uh, a writer in desperation trying to think of a new blog title did a blog entry on a water purification site that was the 10 animals that can go the longest without drinking water, which has nothing, which is, you know, only very, very loosely connected with what he does. It's got water in it. That was right. it. And we put that up there. And then all of a sudden, a, a couple months later, his traffic jumped by huge amounts. But like he, he was getting... Uh, something to the tune of like 3,000 visits a month for, for a little local business selling water purification business systems. It was just, on one, lot, just on the one page. All these it, little, it was like a yeah. tenfold increase. And we looked at it more closely. It was that one article. Right. And it's because it was a listicle format that was something that people, that our, our theory was that kids were writing... Uh, you know, yeah, middle school science, you know, earth yeah. science reports or something, and finding that and using it I'm as a reference. I'm pretty sure it was the kangaroo mouse, by the way. They, what, the, was that the one? The I kangaroo think, I think mouse. Right. I think you're yeah. right. Um, something like and that. And so that was tons of traffic. Now, even then, we're pretty sure it was irrelevant traffic. Well, no, it was irrelevant. Tra yeah. so, uh, irrelevant meaning not one person that ever entered that page would have bought from this. Yeah, no, no, nobody looked through the rest not of the ever. site. And right. we changed our standards for blogging after we realized that. But back then, yeah. it was it's traffic. It's all good. All traffic is good. That was the prevailing 
the thought yeah. process. I mean, when someone's trying to show up as a local roofer, they're gonna they need to stick to their local roofing. That's the yeah. user intent, and that's the user experience. They they in the entity genre of keywords directly relevant to it or loosely relevant to that category. And when somebody gets off in the weeds of that, the, the blogging that we're talking about is a little bit different than that one. That was actually helpful information that was just not relevant to the service. This is actually trash content. Yeah. But I bet that was that, good content. That if we had, if we still had that site and that article, I bet that article would crash. Would have a problem with it. Yeah, yeah maybe. But this but this content is trash. Even when someone tries to write a good blog for a roofer, it is. 95% all still trash. Yeah. Even if you had something somewhat interesting about roofing on a local level, most of the time it's trash because nobody wants to read it. Yeah. I, I could think of a few, like a 90, 94 year old man in Atlanta still gets on roofs and, you know, bids jobs. Um, so it's locally interesting and somebody might actually be interested in it. It's not relevant necessarily to this roofer's website though. Right. And, and, and really the truth is some of this new algorithmic stuff, we can't tell you how they're gonna perceive those pages within a site that really is trying to repair or install roofing. Right. They might not like even interesting articles because it's not relevant to a local service yeah, provider. Yeah, because they're looking at this site and yeah. it's got all this, it's this not very narrowly worthy. focused thing, and then there's this thing out here that doesn't make any sense with it. Nolan Walker here for Data Pens. You may not know, but I own a software company, and we have a proprietary software called Data Pens, D A T A P I N S. You can search it at datapens.com. This is not white labeled. I actually own this piece of software, and I made it for you. It was made for contractors. You can actually take pictures of jobs up to six make a caption about the material, the, the brand, the situation, the, the repairs, and post that back to your individual pages on your website, just like that. It's super simple, anyone could use it. It also texts and emails your clients, direct links to your reviews, so it helps reputation and reviews, which helps conversion and map placement. The geo coordinate gets grabbed by data pens, and Google can tell where you are. So instead of them just seeing reviews, they see all jobs or even estimates that you do. This vastly uh, outperforms just getting reviews, helps the map show up, helps organic keywords. And remember those captions that you're putting in there help expand the keywords per page and it's great regular content. I love it. We made it just for you. It is organic optimization on steroids for both your website, your rankings, and the map placement. Check out data pens. I think you'll be happy you did. So people need content, but how do you do good content? So that's the question. But uh, I, I just, I want to recap this. Most people don't do this at all. Right. When somebody that's a business owner, contractor, roofer starts down the road of SEO and they hear that and they know that means search engine optimization and they go, I need links and I need content. And they begin to, push that to happen. It's not that they don't need those two things, but when they begin to push that to happen and they're unskilled at it and they start to point at someone and say, do this and that, they inadvertently spam their website and create poor quality SEO. It's so, a, it's the same thing as when they get it in their head, oh, I gotta get more reviews, and so they decide to pay somebody for fake reviews. Yeah. It's the exact same thing. It it's, can go it's down valuing down quantity over quality and you will get bit eventually. This is a slippery, slippery slope compared to- Slippery uh, slope. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, but compared to like reviews, people typically don't buy a bad review, in my opinion, not usually. Now they may focus too wholeheartedly on reviews and not realize- Well, I, mean, I don't mean buying a bad review, I mean just buying fake reviews. Yeah, but most people don't do that. I've done this a lot. I, I talked to all these guys. Yeah. Most people don't do that, but most people will enter content this bad in multiple ways. Hey, do it. And someone doesn't care on the other end. They just write a big site. Yeah. Hey, do it. And I want to see my blogs each month. Just that one action. I want to see my blog each week by God. And yeah. then, Oh, I've, I've had clients call up and say, we want to start getting two blogs a week. And I have to say, why? Yeah. So that, what, what are they going to be about? What are you, what are you going to say twice a week about roofing? 
It's going to be different than anything anyone else has ever said or puts a new spin on things that people have already said. These ones that I just read yeah. are written by someone that this guy pays to do digital marketing effort, and it justifies the paycheck that goes Top to Top 10 him. restaurants. It, 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 it justifies the paycheck in the mind of the business owner and the roofer. Yeah. Now, here's what... Because he's paying for content, and he sees that article he go up, sees so he it. says, ha-ha, success. He sees... Well... I don't know if that article's going to, that article's not going to go up, but. No, no, but, I, I mean go up on the site, not, uh, right. not, not rank. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not going to rank. He, he yeah. just sees it go live. He just checks every once in a while and he looks at the dates. Yes, I'm getting my two blogs. So because the business owner can see the content, they want more of it. Yeah. But here's what should happen. So you cannot force SEO to happen. The algorithm's getting smarter all the time. And this Google helpful content update hating your bullshit content, it's going to get better. So this, a lot of people said, so basically this didn't affect any of our clients at all. No. In fact, we may, we went up a little bit because we don't distribute bullshit content. And we have changed from what we did a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. We're constantly updating. Constantly updating. For what changing. needs. I mean, we, yeah. this is something, and not to toot our own horn too much, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, we find ourselves frequently when algorithm updates happening ahead of the curve yeah. that people that, that oh well they got this algorithm update happening and it's addressing this we look well don't we already do we that, already do that. Yeah. and so i think so and then it comes out and our stuff doesn't get hit in fact it usually goes up We're like okay yeah we were already doing that so when people put this content up though they, they just they start to distribute and if the the business owner can see it they think it has more value, but there's a lot of yeah. stuff behind the scenes, like development of data pens, software coding, SSL, speed, citations, some linking possibly well done, uh, domain authority, all these things help page content, proper page content. That all that, all that stuff helps immensely. Um, 100 points of schema code, all these things. But 90 plus percent of what I just mentioned, the business owner can't see it. Right. They can only see yeah. a design and content. They devalue marketing for that, and then they like stuff in blogging, which is inadvertently hurting them. In fact, the guy that I was talking to doesn't realize that if he keeps doing what he's doing, he will eventually get that site penalized. Yeah, he's, he, it's going to get worse and worse over time. Yeah. Right, we, and again, this is something that, that we had. We used to do blogging for clients, and over the years we reduced it in frequency yeah. gradually. And we probably did blogging for a year or two years longer than we thought it was it's useful. Yeah. Because when we discussed with the clients getting rid of it, we got so much pushback. Yeah. And because they could, there wasn't that thing they could see. So they, at, they at would, that time, they that were, we were very hostile. Changing that because we we stopped doing blogging finally. Yeah. We still did it for actually for years, for like three years or more on people that... After we talked about, do we even need to do this anymore? We this know we don't idea? need to do them, and we know that it was headed towards a, a penalty for the clients, and the algorithm was eventually going to catch up and catch this stuff. But we were talking about it five years ago. Yeah. In the time of doing that, you're talking about what a client can see and doesn't see, and the value they place on something. We were already up to close to a million dollars spend on a piece of software called DataPens. Right. That software was allowing high quality, proper content without adding bullshit pages and bullshit content. And the client wasn't good enough for them that we'd spend a million dollars on software. You want me to do a pen and check in and get a geo coordinate and tag three photos and write a caption like roof replacement with GAF HD Timberline shingles. Yeah, that's exactly what we want you to do because it's so vastly superior to a contrived bullshit blog. Because that pin yeah. has more value than a 500-word crap blog. Not only does it have more value, the 500-word crap blog will eventually get your site banned. Yeah, now. that too. <laughs> I, I, in my opinion, the helpful content update will get optimized and, and you know turned up over yeah. time. Yeah, They're just, it's, they'll iterate on it. Yeah, They even said when they roll it out that it was gonna take two weeks just to roll out the initial. Because they, they were being careful that they didn't obliterate stuff. Because they're not always. Sometimes they'll just do it and wipe stuff off. The they do things really slow now so you can't catch what happened. 
Yeah, so to, to I, make it harder for us to figure out right. exactly Cor- where the right because because there are SEOs out there right now that are trying to figure out the trick. Well, there's no trick. Just do yeah. high quality work. So yeah. l- let's lay out the website. The website that somebody should have. So let's say that it's a residential and commercial roofer, and they do single plies and uh, coatings. Okay. Um, and on the residential side, they're uh, shingle and standing seam metal, snap lock uh, stuff. And so, so they, so you look at that roofer and you're like, okay. And let's say they're in um, Wichita, Kansas, and they're inside Wichita, Kansas. All right. So just hypothetical roofer. Roofer has currently. A cruddy website. Hey, this guy's not in Wichita, Kansas, by the way. 76 pages, 50 plus of them are trash blog content trying to get local clicks. Right. Here's what should have happened instead. Or let's let's give them this this guy's type site and another guy just has this cruddy little dot business site or, or just a dot com with nothing on it. Right. So one guy's trying to distribute content and, and not doing it properly, going to head towards a bad place. The other guy's got a five page website just afterthought did a really you know sparse or neglectful content and so both on the opposite ends of it what should happen with both of them is that they should get a website for their services and materials so roof repair is a service roof replacement roof installer google knows that they're a roofer though and they assume roof repair roof installation roofing contractor they assume those keywords the, the very basic services of a that's roofer. the basic services of any roofer right. right and they're a roofing company now if the keywords aren't represented on a page like roof repair they're still you're still going to have a hard time having your map show up or any organic rankings right because there's no place to send the user besides possibly the map which isn't enough which everybody thinks it is the map doesn't show up without proper content Right. The map will also won't show up with a site bloated with bullshit content. Right. And and things like Google's helpful content update and Panda are going to be true. A lot of people don't understand that all these extra articles that nobody reads can actually weigh the site down. It harms the user experience. Right. Somebody comes there and goes, what the hell is going on? I just needed a roof in this in Wichita, Kansas, and they're talking about the best restaurants to eat at. And... <laughs> Five reasons Sorry, they should get a, a roof inspection after a hailstorm. Yeah, I don't really give a shit about all this bad content. And Google knows that if they go to this site and start bouncing around all this contrived bullshit content, not only did they have to pay to storehouse this on a server and crawl it and spider it. I don't care how much it costs. It could have cost a a cent or a micro fraction of a cent, but they have to do this times like a trillion. I was about to say it costs one one penny, but there's 40 billion websites. Yeah. So. Yeah. so so it's expensive for yeah. them to crawl and jack with your trash bullshit roofing content. Right. Which and they're trying to combat this for user experience, the the sanctity longevity of the Google search platform. So right. if they allow this trash to continue somebody else is going to come up and beat them someday. It's right. like, hey, Google's fallen off their game. This is no better than, you know, than Yahoo used to be. Yeah. If somebody came up and culled all this trash out, there would be a better search engine. Lo and behold, we've made one. So they're not going to wait for that to happen so that everybody continues to have, and people have bad user experiences, they'll turn away from going to Google to search for services. Yeah. And, and they don't want to index, cause you, you talked about, you know, it costs one penny to yeah. index that thing. Well, it also costs storage space. Right. If Even if yeah. that article is four kilobytes, but there's 40 billion of them, they got to store on a server somewhere, they got to pay for that server, they got to pay for the power, they got to pay for everything. 40 billion yeah. times 50 trash blog entries on each of them. I mean, it's just, yeah. it's unbelievable how much trash content there is. Yeah. And so it's a bad user experience. So what these two people, one with sparse, neglectful content, one with too much good intentions, but trash content all over the website and growing. Yeah. So what they both need to do is have a site with services and, um, and materials. So the, they work on a shingle, shingle roof repair, uh, stainless steel metal roof repair, uh, single plies, TPO, EPDM, PVC, uh, roof coatings, silicon, acrylic, elastomeric, cool roofs, stuff like that. And, and and the reason the content he's talking about is helpful is you're literally 
informing both Google and the potential customer what you do. Right. What service you provide and what materials you use. So you'll never get a lucrative call for a silicon roof job, spray foam, SPF. You'll never get one for a stainless steel metal roof. Google will not guess that you provide this. Yeah. They will never give you this lead. You can get one unless lead. Unless you are the only roofer in 100 miles. Unless you're, the only, <laughs> unless you're the only choice there is. Unless there's nothing but trash content everywhere and the only choice there is. I don't know that they would even show you, though, on something like TPO. Yeah. If you didn't have a page, even if there's no other roof. Yeah, if you had no page and you, the, and you put in someone they put in might. TPO roof, they'd probably get the Wikipedia. The, the, the scenario that you lay out, though, almost doesn't exist. Oh, I know. So, so the guy's <laughs> now... Hyperbole. And so he's there, and he might have a lot of other pages built up, Modbit, um, roof insurance claims help, hail damage, roof repair. There, there, there could be like 30 service pages, maybe even 40. Or if it's just a residential guy, he might have 10 or 9. Yeah. And then he's also going to have like Wichita, Kansas, so he might not have 20 city pages. He might have like 12. Right. So he's working the metro area of Wichita, Kansas. He's got his service pages, his city pages about us, all that. It's nice and clean and tight. There's not extraneous shit content. There's not extraneous bullshit content for the purpose of a click. There's content about the services. Right. And the materials installed. And the reason something like data pens, and the reason we developed it so many years ago at this point, that hundreds of our clients use it extremely successfully, is because we saw the writing on the wall for bullshit content. In fact, way before we developed uh, data pens, a different company, we used to sit around and talk about this content is all horseshit. Nolan Walker here for Roofers Paradise. Thank you for checking out our podcast here for Roofing Webmasters, where we talk about nothing but marketing. But I'd love for you to check out Roofers Paradise, where I personally interview and talk with roofers. We talk about their successes, their failures, their dreams their goals and ambitions. It's a great podcast where we actually speak to roofers. Love to have you check out Roofers Paradise. You can find us on YouTube by searching Roofers Paradise. Any platform for podcasts, search Roofers Paradise. Be sure to subscribe, or you can actually go to roofersparadise.show. Look forward to having you over at Roofers Paradise. Yeah, oh, yeah. why are we writing blogging, and why does everybody write a roof repair page? If it's all general content, now it has to be unique so it doesn't violate, violate copyright law. Right. Or make And law. webmaster guidelines for that. And webmaster guidelines. But um, it's still trash content. So we're like, will Google ever not show a site based upon these things? Will this become irrelevant? And, and this was a conversation we had many times. It's like, like six years ago. Is, or are, are we seeing, because we started seeing yeah. blogs not perform as well, it's like, is this the end of content on the web So right? there's as, a, as an SEO tool? As an SEO tool, is it going to change? Now, it changed. Blogging is still very valuable in certain categories, like drug addiction or other things, right? And right. Newsworthy things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, if you're running a news website and you're... Um, your revenue is from advertising or subscriptions. Ignore what we're talking about because that's a totally different animal. Well, we're talking to roofers yeah. doing local advertising. So, so when a roofer does local advertising, people don't want to see long, bloated blogging on that site. Right. I always use drug addiction as one because we went to that conference that year. That's heavily digested and read information when people have drug abuse issues yeah. and they read about the intricacies of it and it's very technical and they get like massive amounts of hits on it. But that's not the case with a, with a roofer. Yeah. And a roofer thinks they still need to do the same type of blogging. They just need a site with their services and their materials written well, coded well for the local city, tied into a locality for local search results, not nationally, because it won't optimize because it's not local, and then some local city pages where they might experience hail damage. And then when people go on to search, they're available they're clean, they're precise, they still have a lot of content. I just described anywhere between a 30-page website and a 50 to 60-page website, by the way. Yeah. So this wasn't a small website, but it was very clean and relevant to a local it's roofer. Focused. It's focused on that material, on that service, on that roofer. There might be a little extraneous about us and our story, but that's about as deep as that part goes. No one wants to see anything else. Anything else is trash content. It's bullshit. Right. So when they update this, what's better than blogging? 
little snippets of technical information and validation of work done, hence data right. pins. So somebody goes and takes 90 seconds and they tag three photos, they type in the client's cell phone, they pick their roof replacement page and their Wichita, Kansas page, and they write replaced uh, roof replacement with GAF HD Timberline shingles and hit pin. And then it grabs a geo coordinate that looks like a digital hand raised to Google. We were here validating that we did work here. And by the way, instead of this roofing uh, replacement website being stagnant forever, yeah. we're validating work done here. Here's three photos of Multiple a job. Multiple times a week. Yeah, all yeah, the time. In some cases. Here's three photos of a job we did. And this is what we did there. Please recognize us. It literally looks and is a digital hand raise. Yeah, and it's uh, the the initial pages on the website. I, I often talk about those two questions for local SEO. What do you do? Where do you do it? Right. Your website has answered in general terms. What do you do? Where do you do it? And it may may get specifically down to things like TPO and stuff like that. But then every pin answers those questions in a much more specific way. Yeah, we installed a Firestone TPO roofing product for a hotel roof replacement required by the general contractor. Right. Right. So, so the and and then and then you might actually be a Firestone TPO uh, installer approved for that, and then another local GC comes up and says, "I need a," and they're like, "Oh, I'm sick of getting mule hide." I'm, lo I'm looking for somebody who can need this. Firestone oh, hey, this TPO. And Google didn't even know anybody there worked on it that was local. And they're like, oh, wow, this guy just updated and works on Firestone TPO, this GC of this, you know, three, you know, 100,000 square room. It wouldn't be that big, but, you know, some million, million square. But um, then you you have the availability to show up. That's fantastic content. Right. And so then the general page about roof replacement, it gets expanded into types of malarkey and, Atlas and GAF and Owens Corning and types of situations and problems and nuances of shingles or architectural or Da Vinci Slater, whatever it is, you have the ability to really expand content in a natural and more technical way that all the content is related to the entity of keywords for a roofer. Right. Legitimately, not some body jackassing up some bullshit content, which is exact. it's like, oh God, well, we well, write that guy. Hey, he's complaining. We'll write another couple of blogs. So it's like, oh, you know, I want to blow my head off. I got to write some, what are we going to write? I don't know. Five best restaurants in Wichita, Kansas. <laughs> it's irrelevant. Do Go something. Go ahead. Yeah. And, and the thing is, when you're, when you're writing that kind of blog, let, let's just say you want to you're trying to you're trying to talk about Wichita, Kansas. You're trying to get that location keyword or whatever. Right. Um, in old days, writing a blog, you'd have to write the blog. Okay, we have to mention the city and the state every fifty words or whatever. Oh, I so had that get this repetitive three percent saturation three rate. Three percent saturation yeah. of the keyword, yada yada yada. But now with something like data pins, you've got you say it once and you've got schema. So you're bypassing all that BS about saturation and yeah. repeating the keyword over and over so that it sounds like a robot wrote it. And all of a sudden you're delivering data. This is the, geogra this is the geographic coordinates that they were standing in when they did this pin, when they did this so, job. So what Jason's talking about, I'll give an example of this. So okay. what the roofer would do typically in bullshit content, and you and I will go off and want to explain what we meant, but what he... <laughs> What he means is that it's schema is already the city that they're in. Right. So that they don't have to say roof estimate um, for hail damaged roof in Wichita, Kansas. That is slightly spammy. So, right? So that. Yeah. It, Especially it, if you've got 100 pins on a page, then all of a sudden, 100 in times you say Wichita, Kansas. That, that he did that. Now, the roofer on a blog would have said three reasons to get your home inspected after roofing hail damage in Wichita, Kansas. So they, they plugged in this bullshit title into a blog and had some poor schlub write like 500 words about it. Inject it in the website and go dance, you dirty web geek monkey, <laughs> and, and justify your payment to me. Right. Google, so that's what, dance, you dirty web geek monkey, justify your payment to me. 
he feels validated, Google gets shit content that doesn't match user intent or a good user experience. Doesn't, doesn't even come close, but that's what happened. Now they pin it, and they say roof estimate for recent uh, uh, hail damaged, uh, hail damaged roof estimate for recent storm, from recent storm, you know, whatever. Um, it's already, they geo-coordinate it, wrap it in schema, know the location. The page of content written was already about Wichita, Kansas. You don't have to artificially stuff all this crap anymore. And right. most people are still stuffing stuff and distributing content like it was 1999. Yeah. So they go in there and they stuff all this crap up. They load their titles up and it's all just kind of a big load of horse shit. And Google knows it. And they may not have like slammed a lot of people yet with this, but this is basically like, we're coming for you dumb suckers if you don't quit this shit because yeah. we're tired of it and you're hurting our business platform, the integrity of Google, the user experiences as a whole, and we're paying for the crap. Yeah. So, and and yeah. just to reiterate, they told us in more specific terms than usual what this update was addressing. But, they yeah. told us the exact date the rollout was going to start and they told us it was gonna take two weeks for full rollout. They're never that specific. And so when they are, that that's them sending a subtle it's signal foreboding. that you should pay the pay attention to what we're saying. Yeah, yeah. It, it was light right now, but they're coming for this bullshit content. Yeah. It's it in my it, everybody's like, oh it did nothing. No. It set a tone. A lot of people were panicking when they first announced, and and th there were actually people that are known like SEO spammers mm -hmm. who were going through like annihilating, um, mm -hmm. like pulling content off their site, just deleting it before it got hit. Mm -hmm. uh, a person with the initials NP, like mm -hmm. eliminated twenty percent of the content on their website. Really? Yeah. Um, people were I didn't know that. that. Yeah. I didn't know that. I, I, I read about that like two Interesting. weeks Interesting. Um, and a lot of people were telling on themselves, give, giving their own opinion of their own content by when Google said, well, we don't want the spammy stuff anymore, and they started taking it down. Um, but then what? But it started rolling out, and then everybody oh, was like... Oh, you for reals, Google? It's like, did, yeah. did, did anything happen? And I, I've seen a few people say, well, I finally found a site that, got hit, that maybe got hit by this, and it's all spammy crap content. Right. But it hasn't hit. It, I, I think they got it in place. And I think it's like you said, that they've got a dial on it and they'll crank it. It's up not done yet, goes. in my opinion. Because yeah. if you look back, you could have done a five to six percent saturation for the word like roofer in Dallas, literally like in, in the year 2003 and four. Yeah. Like around 20 years ago, you could have saturated that. Yeah, around 20 years ago, you could have saturated uh, Roofer in Wichita. Literally like 3 to 5%. It would have read like just crud all throughout the site. And I don't know. Nobody... If you're looking for a roofer in Dallas, Texas, then you want to make sure and call the best roofer in Dallas, Texas. Yeah, it literally, <laughs> they literally read like that through. Yeah. And, they, and you would optimize. And so then it went down and said, hey, and Google, uh, and people's like, oh, they put it down to about 3%. And they go, oh, it's about 2% now. They're really coming down on it. And it's 1%. And you still have to clue them into where you are. Yeah. But you just don't saturate it or make it a poor user experience or read. And it still, and it continues to evolve is the point. So it started there. It's here now. The Google Helpful and now, Content And now we've got it. schema that can provide them that information without it having to be visible in the content in some cases. In some cases, it's, like, yeah. Like every one of our check-ins, uh, on data pins, every pin yeah. is is structured in schema so that it informs the search engine. This is a service check-in, meaning we were in this, we were performing service, and here's the location, and here's a picture, and here's a description. Right. But all of the all of that context and structure of the data you give them is invisible to the person viewing so, the website. But Google reads it. So the algorithm yeah. reads it, sees the better roof replacement page, the better TPO page, allow, feels more comfortable with data that's uh, you know verified by digital hand raises, uh, geo coordinates, sees the diversity of content, and allows it to show up higher in rank. That, that is the SEO. That allows yeah. it to show up in the map ranking or the organic content keywords under the map, and that's what 
it does. Everybody else is distributing crud or doesn't put anything out at all. And the algorithm is going to continually move towards having high quality content. They eventually will get rid of all this stuff. And yeah. so if, if you didn't get hit by this now, well, most people, frankly, most of the roofers are already experiencing this right now. Most of the roofers have lack of content, poorly done, never worked on, never changed. Yeah, more have lack of content than have too much. Right. It, it's pretty rare. Every once in a while we'll get that person who's come in and they have a 400 page website with tons of redundant garbage. They do, it's rare. Even that 75 page site that I was just now talking about, um, it's just recently, if you notice, I just now thought we've only been talking about too much content for a couple of years, year and a half. Yeah. Like, yeah. We, when you see a site that begins to have all this blog stuff, that's really been hot topic for the last year, year and a half. Yeah. And it's like, hey, we really need to pare this down. This is not looking good. We take like a 400 page site and say, you get basically no search volume on 300 of these pages. 300 of these pages need to come down. They're actually possibly causing you some sort of algorithmic penalty or subtle penalty, or, or even they didn't cash them at this point because they want to bog their servers down with your crud. Right. And they're continuing to push content out. It's very difficult for those people to come off their thought process of spam. Um, Might have gotten a hold of this guy before he went down that road too much further. Uh, but they're, they're embarking on that road right when Google's making major moves and saying, we're coming for you. Yeah, don't do it anymore. Yeah. Oh, nothing happened. We've got the infrastructure set up to <laughs> strangle you. Yeah, this yeah. is the rollout. It's yeah. not necessarily right. the final act here. Yeah, and, and really, it, it's, as much as people want to villainize Google, they're just trying to have a quality user experience. There's nothing villainous or you know ominous about this they're just like please stop please stop we that, don't want it, it's not a conspiracy yeah. they're trying to provide a service so that they can show ads and make money it's and it's simple yeah nobody wants to come read all these cruddy blogs and bullshit content right nobody nobody wants to see it but for some reason that's what business owners think they should do because usually when someone gets onto seo and starts thinking about it their thought process is about 10 years behind. And in their defense, meaning the roofers that are doing this stuff, the digital marketing agencies as a whole are horrible. And they push it. And, they and push they've it. got, the digital marketing agencies have websites themselves with blogs that are 10 years old, yeah. pushing that exact idea. And they've never taken it down because, well, that blog still gets, still gets traffic. Well, we, we had to take it down. I know, well, you're referring to a guy the other day that read a 10 year old blog. Yeah. And the blog was actually by the leader of Google <laughs> and goal. SEO. Yeah. I'm not gonna yeah. mention the guy's name, but it was like the head of SEO for Google. Yeah. Presumably the blog might've been on Google. I doubt it. They probably got it off like a search engine journal or, you know, Yeah, I, I think that's what it was. Okay. But it was old. If you read a blog entry about SEO and look at the date, yeah. if it's over a year old, be suspicious. It was 10 years old. Yeah. It was written by a credible party. And 10 years ago, it was 100% correct. It wasn't. Oh, was it wasn't. Okay. <laughs> they, were, they were suggesting subdomain because 10 years ago, we did this. Sometimes information gets released by Google that isn't accurate entirely, right? Yeah. But but they they were suggesting subdomains uh, mm -hmm. for location as good as in an entirely different area. That's a whole different. That's a whole different one. That's yeah, actually yeah. We that's actually a, a good podcast. Though so it was yeah. <laughs> uh, how to how to rank multiple locations uh, for a roofer. On yeah, we've actually got yeah we've got that something up like that. How to yeah. how to have multiple map, map rankings for a roofer, and it was it was very informative as to how that needs to occur. Yeah. But um, but anyway, the point is, don't listen. To, you know, ten year old uh, SEO is like my one one year old SEO is probably wrong. Maybe, but their website's not going to fail usually from as long as the people were up to date that did it one year true, ago. True, true. You know what I mean. But but, but but definitely look at the date. It'll slightly change. And yeah. try to find current information. Nolan Walker here for Roofing Webmasters. I want you to consider becoming one of our clients. We've done this for 12 years, have hundreds of clients. We help everybody with their design, their code, their content, showing up on Google as high as possible. Clients get regular call volume. If you've never experienced what I call the big show, showing up on Google organically, which is where the vast majority of the clicks occur on your map, your reputation, your reviews, your organic keyword ranking, you owe it to yourself to try us. We even have proprietary software that we own called data pens that lets you post pictures of jobs. 
unique captions that increase keywords and long tail keywords, uh, your rankings on Google, text and emailing clients about reviews, even posting pins and photos and captions back to Google, all this helps your organic rankings. Data pins is fantastic and the work we do here at Roofing Webmasters is fantastic. Please give us a call, we'd love to hear from you. So I'll sum up with this. Um, most people do sparse content or no content. Google doesn't even know what to optimize you for besides your most basic services. Which you haven't told them. And the basic services can't show up either really because there's now a poor user experience in general. Right. That's why you don't show up well on mapping or organic keyword terms at all. And this is for what we like to refer to as the big show. So if you've never shown up where almost all people go still to Google, and while they're there, 70% plus go to a non-paid organic item, SEO or non-paid on Google is the big show and you're missing out and it forces you to have to buy leads and have a wrong thought process towards marketing in general. Right. The other side of this deal is people uh, you know, throwing in content, contriving crud, blog entries, and doing the stuff that you think they want to so show contriving stuff just for the purpose of you showing up in ranking, but it's, you know it's a poor user experience. Yeah. And it's, Google. And, and it might get traffic, but it will be irrelevant traffic. Or, and and with, this, yeah. with this update, it probably won't even get traffic. It'll get anymore. penalized eventually. Yeah. yeah, eventually it'll get penalized algorithmically, just automatically yeah. deemed as trash that it is. And they're getting very close to doing that and have already started that on larger websites, even on local roofers. Uh, we see this. And so what you need to have is your services and your materials listed that are legitimate. And you're not going to go down to the point of a fastener for a page on a metal roof. You'll talk about metal roofs and one of the, one of the captions on a, on a pen on the standing uh, seam metal roof page could be corroded fasteners need to be replaced. Or right. replacing corroded fasteners. Because you identify on a metal the problem roof. and then you identify your solution. Yeah, yeah. so uh, replacing corroded fasteners on metal roof and caulking them or whatever it is, that's an acceptable addition of content onto the standing seam metal roof page. But you don't have such obscure content as a corroded fastener. It's too obscure. But you have uh, pages about your primary services and your materials. You have some server, uh, city pages, and you have, and then you update that with valuable content, which would be digital hand raises, pens. I'm here with some unique photos that count as unique content, and a technical perspective of the estimator or owner or manager out there on location, ten word blurb, and that is vastly superior. One of those pens to somebody trying to write a 500 page word uh, blog, if not, that gets you penalized. Right. And if you'll do that, then you have the best chance to take advantage of the big show and show up in map ranking, reputation reviews, and organic keyword ranking. And that's how you do it. And it is, uh, it is able to be done by almost anyone, in my opinion, because of the failure of 95% of anyone to even try. Right. Even try like at, at all to try to figure it out, to hire someone much less like roofing webmasters and to have data pens inclusion, but to, but they didn't try it. So we, right. we deal with a, at least 10% of the roofers out there, 90% of them don't see this and would never call and go after the cheapest trash they can and have problems with it, hence Google having to go out and, and take care of this problem. Right. So if people made websites like we make, they wouldn't have wasted their time on this algorithm update. I can imagine this algorithm they wouldn't update have needed to. cost them tens of millions of dollars at least to even initiate the response to the trash. I mean, it's pretty much like the Panda update where they told people for years, stop buying links. Links should be legitimate and organically naturally generated. I believe. And they kept saying it and saying yeah. it. And it, but buying links still worked and they had to go through the trouble of the trouble. updating the algorithm, massive effort to update the algorithm. Yeah. It took them years to do it in order to identify bad links from good links. Now, they didn't want to do that. No. 
because they didn't they didn't want to police the internet and they didn't want to do the work. I mean, can you imagine the percentage of stock that the founders lost and those first algorithmic updates in my opinion and I don't know had to have cost billions and billions. Oh, absolutely. That was the structuring for the developers of Google had to be done to combat the spammy trash crap that was out there. I don't know how much it cost for an an inclusion in you know, a new algorithmic add-on because they already had their base of software programmers there but you can bet this cost at least tens of millions oh yeah well, I mean and when you think about it the original Google is uh, built by two guys in a garage yeah it was, and the now code they was have like a, you know they have hundreds thousands of, of people developers. coding non-stop yeah working so non -stop it was on was it a billion dollar update I don't know but if, if they don't tell us that if so. trash wasn't being distributed like prolifically as the primary it wouldn't have happened right like we if everybody designed websites and did content like we would this would have never occurred right ever occurred it wouldn't have to it wouldn't have had to have occurred they're only having to penalize people for the, the which will tell you that this is the majority this is the average result of content or at least a very high percentage yeah. So at least somewhere, I, I don't know how high a percentage it would have to go to jeopardize the integrity of the search algorithm for poor user experience for Google to say, okay, screw it, we'll spend $200 million. Yeah, okay, fine. Put these fine. 200 guys on this for the next two years. We've got 150 <laughs> problems. Which ones are we going to take care of? The, or we're still getting bad content. AI is writing it now, and that's trashy too. And we're still getting all these bullshit blog entries from everyone. Okay, fine, fine. Fine, we'll million. do it. Yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> and then go do this one, this one, this one. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Three billion, we're done. I'm not doing any more for a little while. So I give all the SEOs a heart yeah. attack. Move on. <laughs> I, 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 it'll be interesting to see when they actually crank that sucker and like yeah. body slam people. Yeah. Because, yeah. like I said, the the SEOs I follow that are like high end people, yeah, were like initially after the rollout, they're like, it's not hitting any of my stuff, and it's and then the other day it's like, hey, I finally found one, and it was all junky content, and they like put up titles and stuff, and it was like on the level of that. Most stuff. people just, listening again don't; they're in an apathetic situation. They don't do enough to get recognized in the first place. Right. Very few people are doing prolific trash content. Right. And are going to get penalized, already penalized, or about you know about to be penalized. Um, if you'll just do high quality practices and understand it, then you can have a party and partake in the big show. I I don't have anything. That, I mean that is the essence of all of it. It can be yeah. done. I'm glad you suggested this one though because it was an interesting. Uh, he didn't want to do it. Well, <laughs> who gives a shit about this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> We have to we have to turn it on to other stuff to make it even be the slightest bit interesting. Yeah. And but but it is an but it did tie into this. It does you tie had, in so and it is interesting, but I question whether anybody will listen to it. <laughs> Somebody will. So it, it, it's helpful if yeah. people listen to it. They will understand the nature of SEO if they listen to you and I drone on. And about and it this could show. prevent them from making a mistake or turn them away from a mistake they're it currently could. making. It could. So. So like and subscribe. We obviously help you with all this stuff, and we'd love to hear from you. Um, we will take it to a level that you didn't think was possible. Our entire goal at this point in time when I taught people is get them as dominant as possible. They don't stay unless they become dominant with us and make tons of money. Right. We're month to month service, hoping to keep them forever. People stay because they get results. Crap like this, you don't have to worry about it. <clears throat> Somebody starts talking about this, you start getting spam emails. Are you going to get in trouble from the helpful content update? Doesn't matter, I've got Roofing Webmaster. Oh, there were a week after they announced it, there were unhelpful articles about the helpful content. Oh, they yeah. Already listicles and all kind of crap trash, popping uh, out. Trash content. Yeah, article. trash content about the, the, the uh, algorithm awesome. update that's going to kill trash content. It's it funny. was beautiful. Uh. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you. Give us a call. We'll see you later. Take it easy. Bye.